Hey y'all, Michelle Raza here with the Finding Yourself Book Club, and today we're going to talk about Lindsay Gibson's Recovering from Emotionally Immature Parents. We've been discussing uh, Chapter 5, Skills to Manage Interactions and Evade Coercions, um, and today we're going to continue with Creating Space for Yourself, Disengaging, sitting, Setting Limits, or Leaving. If you get a chance, please do check out our website. We're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There you can take our free life balance questionnaire and submit it to us, or you can also just fill out a contact form and we'll be in touch. The first consult is always free and there's no obligation thereafter. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so the previous uh, steps that we've talked about, um, stepping out of your rescuer role, being slippery and sidestepping, and leading the interaction. And so today we're gonna to talk about step four, creating space for yourself. Four, create space for yourself. Disengage, set limits, or leave. I don't know why I never, there. Before spending any time with an EI parent or other EIP, hold on, I'm gonna close the door to my office. Before spending any time with an EI parent or other EIP, you should plan how you are going to create some healthy room for yourself. This is necessary so you don't disconnect from yourself or feel stuck in their one person show. Ways to disengage and keep distance. Sometimes conversation is the last thing you want to encourage with an EIP. You may prefer to keep emotional distance because the EIP likes to engage in domination, criticism, shaming, or sarcasm. One method you could use is to use fantasy. You can also use compliments, or you could act fast. Using fantasy. A friend of mine found that things always went better when she took a moment to imagine <coughs> to imagine an impenetrable glass bell jar all around her before she walked in her mother's front door. Anything negative, her mother said, my friend pictured the words hitting like pebbles and bouncing harmlessly off the glass. Now, I will mention that here, <laughs> you want to be careful because she does want to, she's counseling us to prevent from disassociating. So while you may use a method like this in the short term, if you did this, but then you didn't give yourself a way out, then you may just end up disassociating. So be very careful with this one. Use compliments. Compliments were another way my friend, my friend created a more amiable space between herself and her mother. Although compliments don't seem like a form of disengagement, they certainly can be. Compliments put you in charge of the interaction and manage the EIP's mood marvelously. A compliment can be about anything the EIP is proud of. The best thing is that the EIP can then emotionally feed off the compliment instead of feeding off you. Now here, <laughs> um, listen to this language. I mean, the EIP is feeding off of you. And this is, I don't know if you've ever heard the term emotional vampire, but that's exactly what they do. They try to, and it may not be a conscious thing, but they feed off of you and your emotions. And so by giving them nibbles of compliments, you're, you're putting, you're basically controlling what it is that they're feeding off of, as opposed to something negative that makes them feel good because it's some sort of power or control that they have over you. Act fast. When you feel the need for some breathing room, it's important to act fast. If you don't take a break, as soon as you start to feel fatigued or antsy, you can drift into their EIRS trance zone and be unable to extricate yourself for a long time. So this is where I was saying, saying be careful with using fantasy, right? Because you might just end up sitting there and imagining things and then disassociating. Make sure you have a place to retreat to. It's usually not a good idea to stay at the home of an EIP if you can afford not to. When you spend time with EIPs, you feel an odd combination of being simultaneously, simultaneously disregarded yet drained. Staying in touch with yourself around such people can be tiring 
because they relate to you like an audience, not a person. Because EIPs can deplete you, having a retreat place and planning rejuvenating breaks are imperative even during short visits. Staying in a hotel or bed and breakfast can be the perfect way to have some family time while not turning yourself over to them for a full 24 hours. Telling them you have stuff to do for work also works well. Limit your length of exposure to EIPs. No matter how much time or attention you give to an EIP, they'll think it's never enough. If you left it up to them, you'd be emotionally exhausted by the time they wind down. Decide in advance how much exposure to them you can handle before you start zoning out. When that time is up, stretch your arms, give a big forced yawn and say, I'm sorry, but I'm fading. I'd better get going. Or I need to stretch my legs. Then get up, patting their hand or giving a little shoulder squeeze. <clears throat> Patting their hand or giving a little shoulder squeeze keeps things friendly, if that would feel comfortable to you. If they complain or wonder why you're always so tired, you can say, I know, right? Maybe I have sleep apnea. The fact is, being around self-preoccupied and emotionally oblivious EIPs is tiring. You probably do feel like a nap at that point. It's only fair. If they get to talk, you get to rest. EIPs have no idea how long they talk or at whose expense. For example, Michelle dreaded phone calls from her old college roommate with whom she no longer had much in common. After listening to her for a long time, Michelle brought the conversation to a close. Her roommate seemed surprised and said, oh, but I could talk to you all day. Michelle thought to herself, yes, that's because you're doing all the talking. Another woman reported that when she told her mom she had to go after an hour on the phone, her mother protested, you never have time to talk. You can refuse certain topics. Lexi hated it when her mother, Joanne, talked about other family members. One day, Lexi told Joanne that she would no longer listen to gossip about them. Joanne was offended and defensive and told Lexi, well, if I can't tell you, who else can I talk to? Lexi realized that this was not her problem to solve and told Joanne she would be happy to have conversations on other topics. After that, whenever Joanne started complaining about the relatives, Lexi broke in, said, gotta go mom, and hung up without further explanation. Sometimes Lexi just hung up or pretended the conversation was breaking up. After a, <clears throat> After a while, her mother would start to complain, then say, oh yeah, you won't talk about this, before going on to something else. This was another example of how effective persistence can be with EIPs. And I think this is very important. So this is an example of setting a boundary, okay? So when you tell someone, I'm not gonna have a conversation about this, and then you have a conversation about it, effectively you're telling them that they don't have to respect your boundaries. And so if you tell them that you're not going to have a conversation about a particular topic, <clears throat> then you have to hold them to that by either hanging up the phone like she did or getting up and leaving. And it may be stressful, but if there's particular topics that you can't tolerate and you've expressed to them that you can't tolerate it, then they need to respect the boundaries that you're setting. Um, it, it is very challenging, and I, and I think you would want to work with either a coach or a therapist. It is very challenging if you're not used to setting boundaries. Um, and so like I've said in previous videos, a lot of what Lindsay says, it's really easy in theory, and it's really hard in practice. And personally, I struggle with a lot of this stuff. So if you're watching these and, and this calls to you and you're trying to implement it and you don't succeed the first time, that's okay. Just keep trying because at the end of the day, it, it's a silly saying, but practice does make perfect. And all of these things that feel so awkward to you the first time around, they will get better with time. So assert your boundaries and then hold people to them. And if they cannot respect your boundaries, that may be time to consider whether you really want that relationship. 
Use a style that works for you. Lexi gave herself permission to call a halt and get off the phone abruptly. No long goodbyes, no gentle wind downs. She just hung up. On the other hand, Audrey was a person who felt more comfortable being nicer. For instance, when Audrey felt drained by her mother, she broke in and said in a kind voice, Mom, I'm as sorry as can, can be, but I need to go now. I'll talk to you later. Abruptly or kindly, both women were successfully safeguarding their energy and declining their mother's control. Both Lexi and Audrey accomplished their goal of getting off the phone, but they did it in their own ways. Just leave. Most adult children have been trained to wait until an EI parent is finished with the interaction or else risk being called impolite or disrespectful. EI parents often refuse to let their children have emotional space. For example, look at me when I'm talking to you. The child is certainly not allowed to say when they've had enough. This is part of the passivity training that children of EIPs get. They were supposed to stay put, perhaps disassociate, until the EIP is finished. In situations where an EIP won't give you room to say when you've had enough, leaving is not cowardice or rudeness. It is just another way of setting a boundary in a way that hurts no one. You can cut off contact. If EI parents won't respect boundaries or are too harmful in their behaviors, you can choose to cut off contact for as long as you need to. Sometimes we need a break from EIPs or parents who have become too draining or toxic. If interactions are invariably painful, keep some distance until you feel strong enough not to be dragged down by them. When EIPs have been abusive, keeping distance might be the only option that feels protected enough. In rare cases, for good reasons, some people decide to break off contact altogether. Okay, so that was a bit longer than the previous ones, uh, but that was section four. Sorry. Creating space for yourself. So that's disengaging, setting limits, or leaving. Um, the next time we talk, we will cover the fifth of these. Sorry, I'm going. Which is uh, stopping them. So. That will be what we talk about next time. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help us little YouTubers. And if you get a chance, please do check out our website, www.findingyourselfsatx.com. Take care, y'all. Have a beautiful week, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.